What is going on, YouTube? Northeast Ohio Sports Cards here to talk comic books today. Yes, the people demanded. They've been clamoring in the comments. They have their pitchforks and torches. They want comic book talk. Well, here we are. Before we get into it, like, comment, subscribe. You guys know the drill down below. Uh, go ahead and smash that like button. All you all you people that wanted the comic book video, um, that's your price. You got to hit the like button. See how many we can get. Uh, let's get into it. So it's been a while since I did a comic book video. I have bought a few things, uh, but I have, to be fair, to be 100% transparent, I have shifted some of the comic book spending back into modern MBA as I feel that now the time is right to be buying basketball. So I'm trying to split the baby as much as I possibly can. That could be a little bit tricky sometimes, especially with the prices that a lot of the comic books that I want are. They're all $1,000 plus or close to it. A lot of them, not all of them. Uh, and, you know, sports cards aren't the cheapest things in the world either. So I've been trying to split between the two markets, and that's been tricky. So the last two books that I bought, one was a pretty big one. One was a medium-sized one. I would show them on camera. My camera is not currently hooked up at the moment. I am doing some rearranging on the desk and do not have it hooked up. So I just pulled up Google images of them. Uh, I've showed them on camera before. So the biggest one was Ultimate Fallout 4. Uh, I got the second print. So for those that don't know, this is the first appearance of Miles Morales. Uh, I got it in a CGC 9.8. The first print goes for about three grand. Uh, I did not want to nor have the budget to go there. So my choices were a 9.6 first print, which is also about a thousand or the second print in a 9.8 now. And I debated this for a while and I went back and forth with a lot of different uh, comic book groups that I'm in to weigh this decision. Uh, most of them said go with the 9.6 second print, which I'm sure is sound logic, but I just, I just wanted a 9.8. So I went with the second print. It, it was tough. It was a really tough decision. I really debated it a lot. Um, but the reason why I went with the second print is uh, I like the cover better. And, you know, I'm not necessarily looking to move this anytime soon. Um, eventually I'm going to get a new office and I would like to display a lot of these and this cover. The difference is I don't have a first print cover pulled up, uh, for those not familiar with it is, is that you can't see his face on the first print. Uh, his face is behind where it says Spider-Man no more right here and is shaded out. So you just see from the neck down, basically second print actually has Miles Morales, Miles Morales's face on it. Uh, the other thing that appealed to me about this, which I don't know how big of a deal this is in a second print. But the census count on this is only like 650. The first print's pretty high. Uh, it's like three or 4,000, I think. Please don't quote me on that. But the first print keeps going up. I pulled some recent sales lately, and a lot of stuff has kind of, like we see in the sports card market, stuff spikes way up and then kind of falls back just slightly and then levels off. Some stuff's starting to do that. Not everything is. We'll talk about some specific examples. Uh, and, but... You know, if, if you're in any of the Facebook groups for the comic book stuff, um, you know, it's I still just find it. I, I don't I guess amusing is the right term and maybe they're right, but I, I'm going to die on this hill. The, they're you know, they're, they continue to freak out. Specifically, this is a hot button one. This and New Mutants 98. But this one's caught a lot of heat lately as well about what the prices are doing on it and how a modern book, which this is. uh 2011 this came out in 2011 uh a modern book with a three to four thousand census count how are these prices going that crazy this is unsustainable this doesn't make any sense etc cetera, etc cetera. and it, you know we've been over this a ton but for anyone that maybe just was coming to my comic book videos for the first time you know my take on this is the the I'm going to speak very loosely. So when I say comic book people and sports card people, don't anyone, any individual groups take offense. I am just using it as generalized terms. Uh, 
the comic book people are like, you know, this is nuts. 4,000 census count. This is crazy. And the new investors coming in, the new buyers, if, if you want to use that term specifically, and I, and I don't think it's all sports card people. I think there's a lot of people entering the comic book market that have never done sports cards. I, absolutely. Uh, you know, the Marvel machine just, it's like a black hole. It just sucks everything into it. It just pulls things into it and it's not going away anytime soon. But I think people that have been diving into the sports card world the last couple of years are looking at this from a completely different viewpoint. You know, they're looking at ultimate fallout Four or new mutants, 98 more modern books with high census counts. I'm air quoting high. And they're saying 4,000. That's it. And the comic book people are going 4,000. Are you crazy? That's printed into the ground. Get out of here. This thing shouldn't be four grand. Uh, and this really comes down to basic supply and demand. There's only 4,000 of these. That's really not a lot. <laughs> like when you really sit down and think about it, it's just not a lot. It really isn't. It sounds like a lot. It's not. It really isn't. You know, in the old comic book market, you know, when it was its you know own little thing, maybe that was a lot. And it actually probably was a lot. But when a number is that small, it doesn't take that many people coming in to drive up the demand. And I think it's people are flowing in, not just, you know, casually strolling in. I think a lot of people are I know a lot of people are coming over to this because I see the messages that I get daily on Instagram, Discord, Twitter, YouTube comments, etc., about people saying, hey. I get what you're saying. I agree with you. I'm hopping into the comic book market as well, or I've already been in, etc. And us sports card people, I don't want to say like I'm not sitting here like we're like crazy rich or anything, but we could just move like reach into the bag and pull out some a couple random PSA 10s, sell them and then go turn that money into comic books. We have liquid assets that we could cash in on one side to use that money to go buy a comic book. You know, you could go sell. Let's use Zion as an example. You could go sell a Zion PSA 10 Prism for 700 bucks. You know, maybe you sell two of them and then you could come over to the comic book side and buy an ultimate fallout Four. you know, what would you rather? So let's do the math on this. That would be about, uh, two around two Lucas PSA 10 prisms pop count 15 K a piece. And there's plenty of other Luca rookies out there. Would you rather have, Two Luca PSA 10 prisms that there's 16,000 of plus all his other stuff or a first print ultimate fallout Four, first appearance of Miles Morales, probably the future of Spider-Man will eventually be in a Marvel movie live action uh, already has into the Spider-Verse. A lot of young people. This is their Spider-Man. And, you know, for the next however many decades that they decide to follow this stuff. There's 4,000 of them. Yeah, sure. More are going to come onto the census. And I get it, comic book guys. Well, I have mine in mint condition, bag and boarded, and it looks like a 9.8. I don't need to slab it. Once again, I'm being a little hyperbolic here. Calm down, comic book people. I have funny voices for the sports card people, too. Um, That's all well and good. That's cool. You got your nice mint condition copy. That's great. Doesn't show up on a CGC census. No one cares. It does. Until it's graded, it doesn't, you know. Unless it's showing up on that census report. I, I don't know how many, you know, doesn't matter. doesn't exist. I mean, it exists. You, you get what I'm saying? So that's the whole logic behind this whole crazy stuff that's going on and, and why the comic book people are freaking out. And on the other side, the other people are like, no, no, this stuff's still too cheap, etc. So because in my mind, 3K, if you have the money floating around for an ultimate fallout Four, as a a long-term hold is probably a good buy. And that's the other crux of my argument here. And for those that have been following the channel for a while, this is a little repeat of stuff that you've heard me say before. I view comic books as an alternative asset that is a long-term hold that I'm not necessarily, I mean, you can absolutely flip comic books. You can. That's not necessarily why I'm entering the market. I'm doing it more for 
okay, I want to diversify a little bit and I'm going to put my money in the comic books that I could sit on and they're just going to go do their thing. Think of it like the mutual fund, just slow and steady. It's the Amazon stock. It goes up, you know, you don't worry about it. It just sits there, does its thing. One day you'll cash out, but not anytime soon. Uh, But you can take the opposite approach and flip and, you know, play the spec game and all that. But my whole entry point has been being very targeted about what I'm going after. Once again, ultimate fallout four. Now I did get a little specky. Uh, the other recent book that I picked up is uncanny X-Men 282. This is the first appearance of Bishop uh, cool cover. It's his first cameo appearance, not his first full appearance, but it's the cover appearance, which kind of trumps a lot of stuff. This is the one that people want. If they want a Bishop book, this is spec on, this is a twofold purchase for me. Actually, uh, this is spec on him coming to, you know, all the X-Men stuff's going crazy because the theory is, is eventually it's going to be on the big screen and that causes prices to go nuts. Movies drive the prices in the comic book world for those unfamiliar with it. The other thing here, this has sentimental value for me. This is one of the first comic books I remember buying as a kid. I got into buying comic books right around Jim Lee X-Men number one and uncanny X-Men 281 was the first two issues I remember buying. And I distinctively remember purchasing this book as well from the Valley view in Brookfield, Ohio, as a very small child for anyone that gets that reference, major props to you, major props to you. So it's kind of twofold for me. I've, I kind of always wanted one in a 9.8. I wish I would have bought one sooner. They're going for about 400 bucks right now. 350, 400. Um, all the X-Men stuff is crazy hot right now. So let's just kind of go through some general things. Once again, I am very specifically targeting things that I believe are going to hold long-term value, not necessarily quick flips. Uh, you know, Ultimate Fallout 4, this is something I know I could just sit on. Now, a big one, which I don't have this one, I can't afford this, is Amazing Spider-Man 300. These have been going absolutely crazy lately uh i believe i don't think it was on ebay but i believe a 9.8 just sold for 6500 uh the last ebay sale in a 9.8 is just south of six grand uh and these have been going absolutely nuts this is the first appearance of venom for those not familiar with it uh and the prices keep going up on this and kind of dragging the whole spider-man market along with it this is another one that people are like this is the sign of the apocalypse in the comic book groups for how much of this thing's going for but it just keeps chucking along. Uh, not many sell very often anymore. That's the other thing about comic books, especially the lower census ones. A lot of people, once they get these, they don't let them go. People aren't flipping comics, especially this bigger stuff. I mean, they are, but not like we flip sports cards. There's a lot more sentimental attachment to this stuff. Uh, you know, as this goes up, we've talked about this one before on the channel as well. 316 Amazing Spider-Man. I do not have one of these. I would really like one of these. Uh, it keeps slipping away from me and it just keeps getting more expensive. These are going between $1,400 and $1,600 right now. This is the first cover appearance of Venom. Uh, classic Todd McFarlane cover. Um, and the prices continue to creep up on this one. It was sitting at around $1,200. I noticed this one's been slowly creeping up along with uh, Amazing Spider-Man 300. Ultimate Fallout, I'm sorry, ASM 252, before we get into Ultimate Fallout 4. Uh, this ties directly in with the other Venom stuff. I do have a copy of this. This is one that spiked way up, and it's been kind of, it had its slight pullback and has re-leveled off. I got mine for about fourteen or 1500 It's currently going for anywhere from high 1819s to low 2122s in that range. Um and I think that's a pretty fair price for it. So a lot of this stuff, if you miss the window, you're not going to get in as cheap as you were before, but you're not paying the peak peak prices. You know, you're, you're, you're kind of paying the after the peak at the new plateau. And I do think this stuff has a chance to spike again. What was going on in January and February or more so February and March uh, was kind of a market correction as all this new money came in and jacked prices up across the board on pretty much everything. And now a lot of stuff is re-leveled back out again, but there really hasn't been a lot of news that caused this stuff to spike back up. So like what's going to happen to 
300, 316, and 252 when a new Venom, like the new Venom trailer drops. That stuff, I think, is just going to go nuts again, and it's going to take it up to the next level. So even though you're not buying in at the cheap, I do think there's still some room for this stuff to go up because most of this stuff has gone up without a ton of news associated with it. Um, that brings me over to Amazing Spider-Man 360, three, yeah, 361. Uh, first appearance of Carnage, classic cover. I should make this a little bit bigger for you guys so you guys can see this. Sorry about that, and girls. Um, once again, classic cover, classic issue. This is another one that's on my list that I have not been able to track down yet. It's just that other things keep getting in the way. This one has been basically flattened out. You could get it from anywhere between $1,100 and $1,300. You could see $1,200, $1,300, $1,300, $1,300. Uh, this was a large lot at 15, 11, 12. Uh, that's a second print, 1,000, uh, 1,100. So this is basically stabilized. This is the first appearance of Carnage. It is an absolutely amazing cover. And he's going to be in the next Venom movie. And I, once again, I think once stuff starts releasing for that, it could cause these to jump up again. This is one of the ones, there's a lot of them out there in air quotes. Uh, but I do think this can jump again and we're not even at the point yet where and i'm speculating a little bit here you know what happens in three to four years maybe even two years when we get a hey tom holland in the next spider-man movie is gonna fight venom and carnage <sighs> everything we just talked about is gonna go absolutely ballistic and you know it's coming there's no way in hell there's not gonna be a movie with all three of them in the same movie you know, maybe at that time you cash out, but I just think it just continues to escalate these prices more and more. And, you know, famously is like the card talk pod likes to say, you know, Charizard can't tear an ACL or you know, get Tommy John or whatever their, their catchphrase is. It, you know, it's the same thing over here. Deadpool tears an ACL. He just reheals it. You know, these guys don't get caught with drugs in their car or women at the massage table to cause prices to crash. They don't tear an ACL like Jamal Murray did the other night that, you know, crashes his card market affects the jokers and affects MPJ. And for the comic book people, the joker is a nickname for Nikola Jokic, not the actual Batman joker. Um, so this stuff just seems so safe to me. It's not flashy. Here's the other cool thing. These things make amazing display pieces. They just look fantastic. Um, I didn't pull any up on here, but the thing that I am now seeing, uh, X-Men stuff's been going wild lately price wise. And I really think I've got a couple already. You know, I picked up the Wolverine, uh, uh the X-Men 133, I think it is 134, the Wolverine solo story with the cool cover and all that. I have an X-Men 11, the Jim Lee one, which is not like an investment level book. It's just a sweet looking cover. I've been seeing a lot of the air quotes, classic X-Men covers and like more popular X-Men covers really starting to tick up in price. Uh, like Wolverine number eight is not considered a key issue. It's got Wolverine and Hulk in the white suit on it. That has really spiked up lately because it's a cool cover and they happen to be a Madripoor, which was in Falcon and the Winter Soldier um, a couple episodes ago. But it's it was it's always regarded as a classic cover. You know, you have Hulk 340, I think it is, the McFarlane Wolverine Hulk cover. The prices on that are nuts. I would love a 9.8 in that, but one hasn't come on eBay in months that I've seen or unsigned. A lot of those are signed. I'd prefer unsigned. Uh, let's keep working through this list real quick. Ultimate Fallout 4. This has been sitting between three and thirty five hundred. Uh, it was flying. It got the three thousand and it's kind of hit the pause button recently. The second print has been holding steady between nine hundred and eleven hundred. That's the one that I got. Uh, I think for around three K, it's a lot to bite off. But as a long term hold. I don't think you can go wrong with this. It's once again, it's a matter of time before Miles gets his own live action movie. You know, he has the end of the Spider-Verse thing. Um, the next Tom Holland movie is supposed to be Spider-Verse slash multiverse adjacent. You know, if we get a Miles Morales cameo in that or a Miles Morales casting rumor in that, this thing's going to go nuts. I understand 3K is a lot, but look at other options. You know, maybe you want the 9.6 first print. 
Uh, I may still look at picking one of those up. I don't know. Um, or maybe you like the idea of the 9.8 and the lower census count second print and pick up what I picked up. I do like the appeal of the second print, which has the, the you know, the, the face reveal cover and also is pretty low on the census report. Uh, the way I understand it is the second print actually got split between two different covers. That's why the census is lower. Uh, this one here uh, with him lifting up the mask is the other version of it. That one is not as popular as the one that I picked up. This one, um, because this is just a mimic of the first print cover cover where there's a slight redesign. But yeah, you can see prices here that just all day, 3,000, 3,000, 3,000, 3,000, 3,000. But I did notice this auction here spiked up to 36. That's a fixed price, actually. Um, so I don't know what caused that one to jump way up. Could just be an outlier, but around 3K all day uh, and around 1K for the second print. So uh, this is another one. I did pick one of these up, and I'm glad that I did. I am a big fan of Gwen Stacy uh, slash Spider Gwen. Um, I have a lot of just off graded comics, not not key issues like first Gwenum, stuff like that. Um, this one shot up. I, you know, everything shot up. So I'm not going to say sit here and say I called this one. Um, but when this was around eleven hundred bucks, I was beg, borrow and pleading everyone that I know to buy it. Because uh, I thought that it was too cheap and it was going to go up. A few people did. And then, you know, I got mine for ten fifty, I think. Uh, and now they they go for seventeen to eighteen hundred all day. Uh, and I can see this one continuing to go up. She's going to be in Spider-Verse 2. Uh, once again, if Sony and Marvel continue to, you know, agree with each other. I think we can absolutely see Spider-Gwen in a live action film at some point in time. There's a huge push for female heroes. If that happens, this thing will go nuts. Be careful on this one. There is a billion different prints of this. Um, I specifically only wanted the first print of this. Uh, the second print is basically the same cover, like exact same cover, but with different design, like different colors on it. Uh, it's just not as appealing as like the ultimate Fallout 4 one where it's slightly different artwork. But yeah, first Spider-Gwen, this is, I, I could see this one. Once again, this kind of spiked up to around 1,800, two grand, quickly fell back down and has been floating at 17 to 1,800. So if you miss the boat and you want in, this is probably a good time to sneak back in. This is one I have not picked up yet, uh, and I probably should. I, I keep putting it off, and it keeps slowly creeping up. Uh, it's Amazing Spider-Man 4. This is a little more modern than I wanted to deal with. There's a lot of these. There's like 4,000 on the census. Once again, that sounds like a big number, but it's kind of not. Uh, this is the first appearance of Silk, which is a female spider, kind of like Spider-Gwen adjacent. Um, Spider-Man character who's been getting a lot of run lately. I can see this one creeping up. If you're looking for something lower value to get into, specifically Spider-Man related, uh, this wouldn't be a bad one to sneak into. I have not purchased one of these yet, so I should probably do that sooner rather than later. They regularly go for like high 300s to 450 is about the going rate on an Amazing Spider-Man 4. This is another one I would really I missed the boat on this one. I know at least two uh, YouTube commenters were pushing on this one, and I wish I would have listened to him a little bit closer. Uh, this is Young Avengers number one. This is once again, slightly more modern than what I'm looking for, but I get it. Uh, lower census, and it has a ton of first appearances in it that are all probably about to be in Marvel shows. Uh, Kate Bishop's in this, which is going to be the new Hawkeye. There's uh, the Iron Patriot, which is potentially a young version of Captain America. Um, a bunch of, I forget, there's like four or five different characters that all are first appearances in this. Uh, and it's it's essentially going to be the future of the Marvel TV verse, I have a feeling, uh, is going to be a lot of the characters from this. And this has really shot up lately. This was like $600 like a month and a half ago. Uh, and they're $1,200 all day now. Uh, and they're pretty tough to find. Uh, you could find them, but they're not. They don't come up as often, and the prices keep pushing up on it. This is one that I missed the boat on that I wish I would have just thought about a little bit more. Uh, the big one, and this one has pulled back quite a bit. So if you missed the window, this is probably a good time to get in. New Mutants 98, we've talked about it a ton. It's kind of the poster child for the channel. It was the first one that the first major move that I made. I had bought stuff, you know, late last year or early last year, just fun stuff, PC items. Uh, this was the first investment level book that I bought in air quotes. I got mine for eleven hundred. Uh, it very quickly shot up to almost thirty five hundred within a month. 
uh, to two months, not even two months, like six weeks, probably maybe not even that long. And it has done what we see in the sports card world a lot where it shoots way up, then kind of drops back and has now re leveled out. You could get one of these for anywhere between. I've seen a couple, I think, sell for around twenty five hundred. I bet you off eBay, you could probably get one for twenty five hundred uh, up to about twenty seven hundred ish. So they spiked up over three K and now they've kind of leveled back out again. If you miss the window and you want one, I think now's the time. I don't see this getting any cheaper personally, and I think it could easily get back over 3K again. This was one where it kind of went a little nutty because Deadpool's an extremely popular character. There was a little bit of news about, you know, Ryan Reynolds will be returning to the MCU or joining the MCU officially, which everyone knew that already. I just have to imagine once we get a Deadpool trailer or any Deadpool news at all, this one's going to go absolutely nuts. And I love this as just a long term hold. Uh, The Deadpool movie is extremely popular. Deadpool is now a mainstream character, and that's not changing anytime soon. So if you want back in, I think this is your window before something happens to cause it to spike up again. Uh, And then the last one, once again, something I don't have yet, and I kind of missed the boat on first appearance of Gambit. And I'm going to. I'm going to use this as a springboard to just kind of talk about the X-Men stuff in general. Uh, You know, we talked about 282 before first appearance of Bishop. This is another one that shot way up and is basically just leveled out. Um, It's been floating around a thousand. You get, you know, it'll go for a thousand. It'll go for 1100. It'll go to 1200. It goes back down to a thousand, 1100, 1200. But it's been sitting in that price range. Really? Anything X-Men oriented, first appearances, first Jubilee, first Psylocke, first Rogue, classic covers, classic stories, giant size X-Men number one, Hulk 181, anything X related. I would look, you know, pick whatever one you like, whatever cover you like, whatever character like, whatever you want. I, I mean, in some cases, you've already missed the window to get the stuff cheap, but none of that stuff's been announced yet. So once news starts coming out that the X-Men officially join the MCU and we start getting movies and trailers, their stuff's just going to keep going nuts. So uh, that's my thoughts on the comic book market at the moment. I do think a lot of this stuff is more appropriately priced now, but I, you know, prices on this stuff are going to move quick when you have census counts this low. And once again, I'm using that in air quotes with all the new money coming in, whether it's, you know, partially sports cards and just, you're going to get some natural attrition. There's like a billion people that watch Marvel now. And if only a very small percentage of them get curious about comic books, that's all it takes, you know? And we're kind of in this weird in between time now where, you know, Tony or uh, Chris Evans and Robert Downey Jr. are done and we're moving into the new phase and all the MCU shows on Disney plus and all that. Uh, and it's just going to be a constant flux where we're just going to be getting show after show after show in the movies, in the movies, in the show. Uh, and it's not stopping anytime soon. So I think this market is still going to continue to grow. And this older stuff, even from the 90s that are air quotes, high census, I just don't think are really that high of a census. Uh, you know, like I said, I get a lot of pushback on that from the actual people that live and breathe the comic book community. But I think as outsiders in this one, we have an edge. So. That's all I got for you guys today. We'll catch you guys on the next one. And girls, peace.